and welcome back to another crocheting along YouTube video. In today's tutorial you will be making a single crochet square. As you can see the stitch is quite dense and makes a good fabric. Today I will be using a 4.5mm crochet hook as well as some DK weight yarn also known as double knit, 8 ply or weight 3. You will also need some scissors or clippers and finally a sewing needle. This is to weave in any ends that you may have after you've finished. So let's get started. Alright, to get started grab the short end of the yarn with your left hand and you can then put your thumb on it to keep it secure. Grab the long end going back towards your ball or skein and wrap the yarn around with your right hand and form a cross. Then you can turn over your left hand and you should have two loops. Pick up your hook and then insert your hook under the first loop and over the second loop. You can then pull this second loop through the first and turn the hook so it's facing back along your left hand. Let go with your left hand and then grab the two ends, both the short end and the long end. Then you can pull tight until you form a knot. Then grab the long end of the yarn and pull the knot closer to your hook. Make sure that you don't pull it too tight to your hook so then it can still move up and down freely. Now you will need to create a foundation chain row. To create this foundation chain row, you need to make chains. For this project, you will need 15 chains. To make a chain, wrap around and pull through. Take your hook, take it left to right, and then pull through the yarn. This creates a chain. Keep on chaining until you have 15 chains. I'm just going to quickly finish up my chains and then I will be ready to start the single crochet stitch. Alright, I now have my chain of 15. You are in fact going to need a turning chain of 1. So just chain 1 extra. Now, as you can see, these V's are made up of top and bottom loops. You want to be working into the top loops of all of these V's. To make the single crochet, insert your hook through the second chain as you do not want to be working into your turning chain. Wrap around and pull up. Now you have two loops on your hook, wrap around and pull through both of those loops. Now continue working into the top loops of all of your chains all the way across. Just a reminder, go into the top loop, wrap around, pull up, wrap around and pull through both of the loops on your hook. I'm just going to quickly finish the rest of my single crochets and I will meet back up with you once you have done the same. Alright, I am back and I only have one more chain to work into. If you have finished your first row as well, congratulations as this is a stitch you will be repeating for the rest of the pattern. This means that the rest of the pattern will be a breeze. Now you need to make a turning chain of one, just like how we added the extra chain at the start of our foundation chain. Wrap around, pull through, and turn your work so then you are working right to left again. This row, you will be working into both V's of all of the stitches. This is different to the foundation chain row. 
This is also the row you'll be repeating for the rest of the pattern. Make sure you don't work into your turning chain though. The single crochet stitch is exactly the same as the first round. Insert your hook into the next stitch, both loops, wrap around, pull up, wrap around and pull through the two stitches on your hook. Now continue this all the way across the rest of the row and I will meet back up with you. Alright, I am back and I have one stitch left to work into. Make sure once you have finished your second row to count all of your stitches to make sure you had the same as the first row. Then make a turning chain of one and turn your work just like the first row. Now all you need to do is repeat this pattern all the way along all of your stitches for the remaining amount of rounds until when you fold your square in half it should create a triangle. See how this pre-made square forms a neat triangle. Hello, I'm back, and I have now finished my square. As you can see, when I fold it over, it forms a neat triangle. I am now ready to snip my yarn, make sure you leave enough so then you can weave in your end. Then wrap the yarn around and pull through. This will make a finishing knot so then your work does not come undone. But to make sure, we will also weave in the end. If you are unsure how to weave in ends, I am about to weave in mine and I will let that video play so then you can see if you are unsure. However, if you do know how to weave in your own ends, Weave them in and then meet back up with me at 9.35 where I will finish off. <laughs> I'm really struggling here to get my yarn back on my needle, as I did not leave enough of an end to start with. This shows that sometimes you need to leave a slightly bigger end on your slip knot, so then you have enough to weave in. Alright, I'm back. As you can see, both of these fabrics are quite dense, although the one on the right is a little bit stretchier. This is just because I used a slightly bigger hook. As you can tell, both of these squares are quite dense and have very little to no holes in them. This means the stitch can be used for making toys or other projects where you need a slightly stiffer fabric. So you can also use them to make baskets or other things like that. 
They are also quite flexible so they can be used for a lot of different things. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you another time. Bye!